Father, I belong to you. And because I belong to you, I want the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I love an old rap song. I know most of y'all just really get into rap. I can see it. I can't tell. But there was an old, old rap song. I don't remember anything about the song other than it said this. Everybody's got a song to sing. Everybody's got a story to tell. And that means everybody. Each one of you here today sitting in the pew. I, I know some of you probably didn't even know that's what those things are called, pews. But everyone that's sitting in the pew today has a story to tell. Now many times when I'm sitting down with people to talk to them about church membership or other things in life, I start out the conversation by saying something like, what brought you to this point? In other words, tell me your story. Now many of you came here by way of the Catholic Church. Some have journeyed here. It's your first time coming to church. Some of you came here because of a banner waving outside. I came here through the Baptist denomination. I came here through the United Methodist denomination. Now that's a story, but I'm not gonna go there today. Today we listen in on a song that Mary shares with the world. But before the song came a story. A story of Mary spending quite a bit of time with her cousin Elizabeth. Now that's what's preceding the scripture that you heard read today. So Mary goes and spends some time with her cousin Elizabeth. And that brings us to point one. Now I'm just, I'm gonna let you doze off and go to sleep today if you choose to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the main point right up front. Point number one. Community brings joy. Now community can bring a lot of other things too, but community brings joy. Now let that linger for the rest of the sermon, if you will. Uh, community brings joy. Today we've got four people joining the church. They have their stories to tell. They're becoming an official part of our community that we call First Congregational Church on the Green. But the community that we're looking at today in the scripture is a small community, a community of Mary and Elizabeth. Now we know that in those days that women did not have much of a voice at all. And in this case, Zachariah, the husband of Elizabeth, who was the professional, licensed, learned, knows what he's talking about, expert in matters of faith, has ironically lost his voice. Literally lost his voice, you know, when the angel came to him and said something about, I know you and your wife are really old, <laughs> like really old, but you're gonna have a child. And he lost his voice at that point. <clears throat> Cause he didn't think it was funny, really. That's why he lost his voice. So the stage is set for us to listen in with Mary and Elizabeth. You see, Mary needs some community bad. Community. Namaste, we say. Seeing the holy in each other, the beauty in each other. As Barbara Brown Taylor says, what she, Mary, does not have is a sonogram, or a husband for that matter, or an affidavit, for, affidavit from the Holy Spirit that says, the child is really mine, and yet the young girl doesn't have to explain her situation at all to her cousin Elizabeth. Isn't that really interesting? Think about it, if that was you, you know, you'd go, now, how'd this happen, honey? Didn't ask questions in search of answers, or even ask for acceptance. 
When Mary sees her much older cousin, she sees a gorgeous woman. Maybe not by ordinary standards, but so full of life that it's hard to see much beyond her joy. Is it any surprise then that in her relief and joy, Mary begins to sing? My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Mary is able to sing that song because of community, because of the time that she spent with Elizabeth, Elizabeth who accepted her just as she was. Mary is able to sing because of community. We all need community, don't we? We need a refuge, a sanctuary for joy to be birthed within us. Maybe we should all this season make sure to provide that kind of community for one other person so that they can sing with their very songs. Because without community, joy cannot come out. But Mary's song has more for us about joy. In Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan's book, The First Christmas, they talk about a helpful lens we might read these familiar birth stories through. They say that Matthew and Luke provide an overture to their stories, kind of a gospel in miniature, a preview of a longer story that covers the important themes. Mary's song, the song that you've heard read today, is that overture to Luke's gospel. Her song sounds all the important themes that will appear again and again in the gospel of Luke. The emphasis in the gospel on women the marginalized, and the Holy Spirit is first evident in this beginning overture that Mary sings. You see, we got this joy way down in the depths of our heart, as the old song says. We've got it there for a reason. Barbara Brown Taylor also says that Mary is no politician, no revolutionary, but all of a sudden, she's become an articulate radical, an astonished prophet, singing about a world in which the last have become first and the first last. Listen again to her singing. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So Mary's song, birthed in community, isn't just for Elizabeth to hear, but for every single one of us, reassuring us of God's steadfast love, God's justice and faithfulness in every age, no matter what. Oh, how our community should be given all of us this Mary-like vision into the future. This belief that justice will reign even if it seems bleak. Maybe we need that kind of vision right about now. Just maybe we'll have to sing louder for the justice to come for all people. So we've got the first two points from Mary's song. Community first, and joy is birthed. And then, number two, we got to let the song of justice be heard around the world. 
The final point is this. For joy to happen, we must listen to some angels along the way. Now remember the story in Luke chapter 1 preceding Mary's song. It starts with an angel visiting Mary. Saying something crazy about greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. And of course, teenage Mary was not familiar with that language. And she was greatly troubled, it says, and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. And of course, the angel at that point said some of those famous angel-like words, do not be afraid, fear not. So the third point then in this story is a willingness to listen. No listening, no joy. No trust, no joy. Now Mary was not in a singing mood until she trusted in this bigger vision, this wild dream that God has given her of God using the lowliest, the unexpected, a peasant girl. Yes, we like the old preacher. We stand expectantly at Hope's window right about now. But you and I might just have let our surrounding culture turn our witness, turn our church into the edge of irrelevance. But oh, like an expectant mother in the ancient Near East, we too have to listen and wait. I don't know about you, but I need a song right about now. I need to hear some stories. I need help in looking forward in hope. And this story of Mary and Elizabeth, of joy springing from a community just like this community, showing us that our little stories can connect with the bigger story of God and what God wants for our world. Are there any Marys and Elizabeths in the pews today? Maybe not literally expecting a child, but aren't we all supposed to be in that process of birthing God in the world? So are you in the pew thinking, I want my story to connect with the God story. I want my story to connect with the story of justice. So may we sing like Mary. Sing like the prophet Isaiah that we heard read, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear. Because God has been our help in ages past and God will be our help in the future and years to come. So let the joy come from community. Trust in the message of fear not and let that joy expand our vision of thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So sing Mary, sing Isaiah, sing John, sing Ricky, sing Diana, sing Leslie, let us sing so the world might hear this message of hope and justice. Amen, amen.